tonight on the Calyx. Are you ready to see some magic? I sure hope so. My name is Amy Dallin, and I will be your keeper tonight for an extremely special adventure in Call of Cthulhu. And joining me, of course, because it wouldn't be the Calyx without her. Thank you so much for being here, Becca Scott. Amy, I'm I'm floored and flabbergasted. That's the best <laughs> intro that there's ever been to the Calyx. I mean, one, it was just delightfully creepy. Two, you did an actual sleight of hand for us. And the sleight mean, of hand is the terminology. <laughs> yes, a, and sleight of hand is the official term. Uh, I am so excited to get to run a game for you. You ran the first Call of Cthulhu game I had ever been in and got me hooked on this wonderful system, but we can't do it alone. Um, as was said in another famous 1920s piece of text that I'll probably accidentally reference 50 more times. Um, please welcome Nora Ibrahim. You know her from Black Dice Society, from Dice and Damsels, uh, from an upcoming Q-Time show that I wanna hear all about. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to play Call of Cthulhu with all of you. This is amazing. I am very excited because I have been an internet fan of yours, but this is my first time getting to actually roll dice with you, and I'm real excited. This is so excited. I love playing with more people. <laughs> Nora, we've gotten to play on uh, Glass Cannon, which was so much fun. And yes. we will return. And then we do a show, Black Dice Society, which adds Amy just shouted out. Uh, it has been so fun to play with you. That um, Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Our yeah, our paths have crossed, and every time they do, I am so happy because it's always fun to game with you. I'm always more and more impressed with your transformations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm doing and a thing today. I am so excited, chat. You're not ready. Uh, <laughs> finally, please welcome from Rolling Keep, from Kicking and Screaming, the podcast, uh, the hilarious, the terrifying Vanessa Guerrero. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited because I also have not gotten to roll dice with you yet. Uh, yes. So this is just dream times. I know, it's finally happening. And actually, uh, Call of Cthulhu was the game that got me into tabletop. <gasps> so I'm like going back to my first love, which is very exciting. Oh my gosh, we just got a huge raid. Hello, welcome, Raider. Oh, Hi! Hello, Hi, Raiders! Deep. Hello, hello. I raided him hours ago. He's raided me back. Much appreciated. Hello, Raiders. Wonderful. Welcome to our Call of Cthulhu game. Sorry to interrupt. Vanessa, you were just saying you, this is the game that got you into it, and I'm doing that thing where I fall into hosting. Amy's hosting, my bad. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Um, yeah. I, I am running the world once we're in the game, uh, but until we get there, uh, you were saying I should message. take this opportunity to thank our sponsor. Uh, <laughs> Bam, segue. Uh, <laughs> this show is sponsored by Chaosium because they published Call of Cthulhu and I said, hey, Chaosium, I want to play Call of Cthulhu. Will you sponsor my show? And they said, yes, we'll give you a discount code. Use this discount code. Is this the right direction? Yeah, uh, Kalix 2021, that's gonna get you 10% off if you buy stuff at their store. You should buy it there instead of other places because if you buy it on their website, you also get a PDF that you can always go back to their website and access, which uh, obviously is super helpful when you're playing games online all the time. You could send people pictures and whatnot. It's already just internetified. So cool. <laughs> yeah, so thanks to Chaosium for sponsoring this stream. Uh, and I am extremely excited because I am I'm, I'm used to doing a lot of homebrew nonsense, but tonight <laughs> um, I am going to try to do justice to the very wonderful, uh, well, wonderful for me who gets to narrate what happens to everyone else, um, adventure called The House of Memphis, which was written by Gavin Inglis with Lynn Hardy and Mike Mason, and which you can and should check out for yourself in the Mansions of Madness book uh, from Chaosium. Uh, I feel... Uh, completely confident that you will love it because it's real good. Oh. Hell yeah. All right. Facts. I can attest. I have run several of the scenarios on the show out of that book. And this this will be the third scenario from that book of five. Uh, so y'all need to pick it up. Beck, is there any more business to take care of before we plunge into whatever's to come? Let's plunge. Also, I'm just so excited that for that fabulous raid. Thanks again to Gabriel and the Sea. And uh, everyone that raided. Um, all right. And with that, we travel backwards into the past to the year 1927 
to Boston, Massachusetts, where Virginia Baker uh, just got a very unsettling note. Virginia Baker, would you describe yourself a little bit for our audience? Uh, yeah, so I was uh, raised in Chicago, allegedly, and uh, I'm somewhere in my 20s. No one really needs to know, but I've switched on to bigger scores, bank robbing. And now that I'm in Boston, I have decided to hide out with a group of old ladies in an apartment complex that will lie for me for a cut of the share. So you could say they're part of my team. Excellent. You have just received a note. And it's not so much what's in the note that is a, a problem as the fact that the note is from Velma Vaughn. <sighs> now, you have not met Velma Vaughn. You don't think Velma Vaughn knows who you are, and that is the way you like it. Because Velma Vaughn runs this certain section of the underworld. Uh, and you were really happy not being on her radar. But <sighs> Somehow or other, you must have landed on on her. You should have known better. She knows everything that's happening, and she likes to have her fingers a little bit in everything that's happening. And she's just sent you a note that says, I hear uh, the job last week at the upper branch on Tremont, uh, that you might have had something to do with it. And I don't recall receiving my honorarium. We can talk about it in person because I might have something you can do for me. But I would need you to bring a couple of people. I've been told that you hang around with a certain Zelda, a colorful figure. Uh, and I, I need you to find someone who can find things out. If you can put that crew together, meet outside the clamp tomorrow, and we can talk about squaring that little debt. That is what's in your note from Velma Vaughn. Uh, all the, the fake clamp. addresses that I had, all the fake names, and she somehow dragged me down. <sighs> who knows what old bitty she squeezed that info out of. All right. Well, I'm not in the habit of leaving debts unpaid, and that's one I don't even remember signing up for, so I guess I better do something about it, so I'll get Zelda, wherever she is now, and whatever she's doing now, and uh, I think I definitely know someone that knows how to find things, so I'm gonna go with my old pal MK Rhodes. Do you tell them where to meet, or are you going to meet before you go to the clamp, which is a, a speakeasy down in an unsavory part of town? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send them each one of the uh, old ladies that I live with with a note telling them where to meet. They're 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 essentially my calling card, my courier service. So MK Rhodes, uh, a little old lady with her white hair up in a very neat bun. <laughs> shows up unexpectedly at your office and hands you a note. MK Rhodes, would you tell us a little about yourself? Sure. Well, first, let's let's describe the door to my office. There is a plaque, MK Rhodes, private eye. It's got frosted glass, and uh, if she knocks, I'll tell her, come on in. Uh, I, and I'm leaning back with my feet crossed on the desk, smoking a cigarette. There is a very full ashtray. Seems that I've just been staring off into the, 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 the middle space out the window for an entire afternoon. Sorry, didn't realize I'd been lost in my thoughts again. I'm writing a book, did I tell you? She and, turns around. Uh, you asked me to my, describe myself. I just got really excited about no, being a, P, a PI. Um, <laughs> so uh, MK, um, she's got a short blonde bob and uh, always wearing some sort of fascinator hair piece. She's always dressed in a sort of androgynous fashion and yet it's high fashion. Um, 
She is a retired police officer, uh, not retired because of her age, retired because she couldn't stand all the red tape and all those boys in their boys club, not understanding that sometimes a woman can get to the heart of the problem. Uh, and she's she's like the first feminist. No, obviously that started in 1800s. This is the 27. But um, look, we've yeah, had the she... vote for like seven years now. You know, it's exactly. going well. We're pretty sure all other problems will be solved any second now. Yeah, she's got a white suit hanging in her closet for any time for any suffragist type. That was seven years ago, but she's still ready. Um, yeah, and uh, she gets a note, flips it open uh, with one hand. Me? What was that? Miss Baker sent me. Uh, My old it's a drinking very nice buddy. Place. Oh, I don't need to hear about that. She's a nice girl. Uh, yeah, she could drink a horse under a table. Is that an expression? It is now. I, I believe it is. Well, that's none of my business. She's a, a, a very nice young lady, but she did need you to know about this, apparently. You work for her? Well, we're just in a neighborly. No. Does she do favors for you like this? She fixed my shed last week. All right, that seems like a fair arrangement. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's good to have neighbors. Well, very nice meeting you. Uh, and you as well, um... Dorothy. Dorothy, that's right, yes. Uh, wish I had neighbors like you, Dorothy. Well, you know, rooms open in the building all the time. You, you can ask her about it, you know. We're, we're nice No, I just people. sleep on a cot. Uh, there's my cot against the wall there. By the way, if you have any, you know, missing person, a missing item, if you want me to stake at anybody's house, you come to me, and I flip a card her way. You can see way. rising in Dorothy as she catches your card a oh. very strong urge to talk to you about taking better care of yourself in a motherly fashion, and she fights it down um, and goes, well, we'll... We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll have to see about that. You look like you could use a good hearty meal, but no, no, it's none of my business. None of my business. Um, and she makes her way back out of your office. I mutter to myself about how cigarettes and whiskey are all the meal I need. And then I You hear a shocked gasp from the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I, I read the card. Um, uh, so the, the note is just, well, Virginia, you can tell me what you wrote on the note. Uh, Virginia likes to be real concise, especially when working with MK and Zelda. So it just has a location and my name on it. <laughs> I burn location, the time with my name. lighter. Yeah, flip open a, a like Zippo style lighter and uh, set it ablaze. Put it in the ashtray. Can never be too careful. I look out the window again. All right, Zelda, where are you when you hear a knock on whatever door is closest? I would say I am also residing in my own abode at the time of this occurrence. I Excellent. love you so much. There is a knock on your door and Zelda the Magnificent, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, hello, hi, welcome. Uh, who you see before you is a woman very short in stature. Uh, she is 54 years old and is very proud of every one of those years lived and every wrinkle on her face that has managed to land uh, at this point in time. Uh, and however, I will say that despite her appearance, which is still marvelous, I will say, she still has legs for days because of all of her training and all of her days and dancing in the pre vaudeville years which is where she got her start in show business and so now you see a woman short in stature with blonde curly hair and hazel eyes and she is uh she's got a turban on her head because she is a woman of mysticism and magic uh from lands of which you never even heard of and so that is where we uh enter our scene as it were so Dorothy pokes her head inside, looks around, and sort of instinctively crosses herself. Uh, but she has a job to do. And he goes, ah, so, I, yes, hello, Miss uh, Zelda? That is I, yes. Come closer, dear, come closer. You don't have to stand so far away. Come on, come closer. Well, any friend of, of Virginia's, she hands you a paper. 
Oh, is it from Virginia? Oh, well, isn't that nice? Hang on, dear. My eyes are not what they used to be. Let me take a look here. Let me take a look at what this says. And uh, <laughs> what does this say? So it just got the date, the location, and my name, because we have a, we have a deal. You know what this means. You know, Virginia's very cryptic, but I've known her for years. And so now with this information, I know exactly what she's up to. I don't know exactly what she's up to, but I know enough. And that this is all the information I need. Thank you, dear. Are you thirsty? Do you want to come in for some lemonade, perhaps? She looks torn. Yes, please. That's fine, dear. Come on inside and I will fold up this cryptic note and I will stuff it in my bra because, you know, my memory is not so good. So uh, in case I need to remember it for later. And Dorothy uh, shuffles in past you. She's the initial startlement of seeing all of the mystical artifacts uh, has has faded as your charm wins her over uh, and she comes in for some lemonade. All right, so do you all assemble at the stated time and place? Yes. Yes. I'm wearing my finest furs as I come into the speakeasy. Did you say the name of it? Uh, it is called The Clamp. But to get there, there is a dark alley not far from Scully Square. And in that alley, there's a door that just looks like a generic fire exit. Uh, a surprising number of people that if you stood there and watched for a while, you would see them rapping on that door which then opens to admit them. It's not an alley you'd be in without a good reason, which is exactly what you have. Uh, and uh, you, I would say, you may decide for yourself whether you've been here before, but inside, Virginia, you know, is a speakeasy called The Clamp. Now, and I am waiting at the bar for uh, MK and Zelda, and I'm having a glass of something that's not as good as anything that they're brewing up in a bathtub in Chicago. <laughs> oh, the no. Chicago snob has entered the chat. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so if you're already inside, then essentially whoever gets there next is going to have to knock on that door. I'll give a knock. I probably, seeing as a woman of my age, I'm not really uh, late for occasions because I'm very excited to be wherever I am. So I give a <laughs> knock at the door. You knock on the nondescript door, and as it slowly peels open before you, an enormous man is standing in that door, and he looks very unfriendly, as it is his job to do. Business. Hello there, son. Yes, I am meeting a friend of mine over here, possibly some more friends, but uh, I am here to, uh, to uh, partake in all the lovely, uh, unspeakable things in this fine establishment. I, I don't know about any un unspeakable things. Who, who did you say you were here to see? Oh, I'm here to see my friend Virginia. Do you know her? Um, roll great me smile, a fast great talk smile. Just to see uh, how this goes. Uh, da da. Let me see here. Fast talk is somewhere on my sheet. <laughs> so, under <laughs> investigator skills, I'm excited. It's our first roll. Uh, oh, I just need to find it. It's in the first uh, column because they're alphabetical. Although, you know what? Now that I'm looking fast at you, talk. may use fast talk or charm, whichever you prefer. Let me see. Wh which one am I better at here? Which yeah. one am I better at here? I like to think I listen. I am very charming. I am very charming. And so I give him my best smile. I, you know, I, 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 I fluff my hair a little bit, give him a little wink and, uh, and ask him if he knows my friend Virginia. Oh, dang. Uh, you did. not only succeeded, you, you wildly succeeded. Uh, that fluff of the hair just activated a piece of his brain he forgot existed. Um, I still got he, it! Um, he starts embarrassed with a sort of scratching at the back of his head. He goes, oh, of course, Virginia. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Thank you, son. You got a nice face. I'll remember this later. 
And he looks genuinely astonished because truly no one has ever told him he had a nice face before in the entire course of his job to be big and scary life. Um, and he backs away as politely as you've ever seen uh, and opens the door and holds it for you as you go inside. Thank you, son. And I make my way over as I search for my friend, Virginia. <laughs> and then you... I see her. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the inside, just for the record. Um, let's see. There's... Uh... I feel like there was something else I was going to talk about in there. Uh, behind our, our big friend at the door, you walk down a tight and grubby staircase to one of the other doors, uh, which leads to a poorly lit interior room with some crude booths along one wall, an unoccupied space, stage along another, and a bar with uh, some of the roughest beer and spirits you may ever have the misfortune to sample. You were not wrong, Virginia. Um, the lighting is low. The barman uh, is unhappy with his lot, but not particularly interested in anything. Um, and uh, sitting at that bar, you can distinctly see Virginia. <gasps> Virginia, it's so nice to see you. It's been a while since I've seen a friend. How have you been? And I Fantastic. give her a very big hug. Oh, Zelda, those gams are the password you'll always need. <laughs> right? I should have flashed the leg. I keep forgetting, but uh, you know, I gave him a little wink and it worked. Always. You can see that he's turning around every couple of seconds just to kind of look respectfully. Mm -hmm. MK, where you are you now? Like... MK has been staking out the clamp for a few hours now. She showed up early, honestly, basically as soon as Dorothy left. And she had a couple uh, swigs of whiskey. She went to a building across the street and climbed up the fire escape with her Kodak vest pocket, uh, which is a, a camera at the time with kind of like a, a, or, an organ fold. It would pop out, uh, but like when it's compressed, it fits in a vest pocket. And of course, she's wearing her men's vest right now. Um, so she's been taking pictures of everyone who went in and out. Honestly, really just honing her detective skills, but she knows when Virginia arrives and she sees her fortune teller, Zelda, that she frequents weekly uh, enter as well. Figures based on the clock down, down the way that it's about the time Virginia had asked her to arrive. So she climbs down the fire escape. Um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, she's a big drinker around town. She doesn't sleep. Um, she might know this this doorman. All right, let's see. Uh, you knocking on that door? Oh yeah, I'm knocking. Uh, I knock one, two, one, two, three, four. It slowly peels open. Um, and Jimmy looks out. Hey. You got business here today? A little bit. A little pleasure. You say you you have been here drinking around town before? I think definitely, yeah. Uh, although my credit rating is not good to roll here. But um, uh, perhaps there's something else that he'd know. And then I say, Jimmy, you hear anything, uh, any good gossip lately? And I slip him a dollar bill through the crack in the door. He picks that up and he says- That is one fifth of my total cash on hand. <laughs> hey, you can buy a very nice meal uh, for for a one whole greenback. Um, and as he slips it up, he says, I suddenly feel an inclined to keep an ear open. I surely, uh, surely will look out for anything. Come on in. Why, thank you. I owe you a drink later. She pretends to be a high roller, but definitely is not. Jimmy looks impressed. A whole dollar and a free drink? Everything's coming up, Jimmy. No, um, she's maybe we'll never give that drink back, but needs information or at least connections. Jimmy is gullible. He's a, he believes you. Um, and he's holding a dollar. So as far as he's concerned, you are a uh, Rockefeller. Um, so he's tucked <laughs> that into his back pocket um, and let you on in into the clamp where your two friends are notably at the bar. Before they see me, I would like to uh, just sort of 
stealth my way over to the bar seat next to them, uh, order a drink quietly to the bartender, keep my back to them, and eavesdrop. And I want to just surprise them at the opportune time. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to have the other two. I very rarely do this, but can I have the Ooh. other two of you please roll me a spot hidden <laughs> to see yes. if you can right. track what's happening here? Especially because um, I think mine's really and I think that should probably be opposed to Becca stealthing. Is that um, fair? Okay. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what degree of success. No. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Uh, that's incredible. Y'all are in the most absorbing conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, some. Uh, you feel free to tell me who it was that got themselves in some trouble that you are talking through uh, very animatedly at the bar as you completely fail to notice, um, despite beautiful fascinator uh, <laughs> and very sharp men's vest, MK Rhodes pulling up at the bar on the side of you. Uh, that would be Jimmy. We're talking about Jimmy, the bouncer who got in trouble and how the uh, only people who could save him were me and Zelda because he got stuck in a finger trap. The first one. That's right, you know, he's a very handsome looking man, despite yeah. what he probably thinks of himself. However, not very clever. In, in, <laughs> and so I had to kind of walk him through it to get it out, to get his finger out of there. But, you know, he didn't really have any much luck. And uh, I don't know, I couldn't help him at, at, at a certain point. At that point, that's why I don't even really trust to have him on my crew. If a man can't handle getting himself out of one of those, I don't know, do hickeys. It was it was in one of my last scores. How can I trust him to be able to handle a heist? That's very Did you true. Say heist. Oh Jesus! Ah! I mean, she I does mean, this okay. every time. <laughs> I mean, I knew you were coming. <laughs> <sighs> Friends. Hello. Hello. Cheers. It is so good to see your Cheers. face. Great to Cheers, have a drink with you. So, I didn't gather us all here just for the pretense of friendship, uh, although we should do that more. Uh, I have a job that I need the both of you for that, quite frankly, I don't really want to do myself. I'm in the business of collecting favors, not paying them, and uh, this is a favor for someone who hasn't even done anything for me, but I'm scared of her. Oh, the the Me. Virginia Baker scared of someone in Boston. I never thought I'd see the day. I know, which is why I have the both of you here and why I'm essentially working for what I think to be free right now. <sighs> not my favorite Listen, thing. Listen, well, I don't agree with not getting paid. However, for you, I will do anything, my friend. Thank you. She actually requested you specifically. Did she really? She requested you specifically and someone that can find something, which uh, MK has proven time and time again to be that someone. And reveal my ways. I'd lose out on work. <sighs> Don't though, I think Jimmy's starting to catch on. Anyways, all I know is that she's given us a specific location to meet at and she's gonna follow up with more details. But I want the two of you to keep your eyes open for something Fishy, because the entire setup behind this doesn't feel good already. All right. And as you say this, you see emerging from a hidden room further back in the dimly lit uh, bar, uh, the exact figure you were just discussing. She moves with a quiet confidence. Uh, she has what is a cultivated nondescript carriage uh, designed to fade into the background unless she wants you to be drilled to the spot by her gaze. Uh, her dark hair is fading to gray, uh, and she appears to just be letting it. She has nothing to prove to anyone, um, as she almost lazily makes her way up towards you at the bar, looks at the three of you, nods, and gestures for you to follow. <laughs> Not she a very reveals. talkative type. No. She mostly speaks in notes and threats. I I've got each of your this. backs should you need. Thank you. And then I, I flash to them. I lift my coat pocket just to show 
I'm back in heat. What are we? So, drop the. What are you crazy? Somebody might see that. Yeah. Especially here. There's eyes everywhere. Vilma leads you back to uh, a room, and she says, closes the door behind you. Uh, it's got just a, a small desk, a cabinet, uh, a nice lamp with a Tiffany shade. Not sure what that's doing here, um, but maybe she just likes nice things. Uh, and as she sits you all down and closes the door, she goes, I speak up plenty when there's something worth communicating. When you hear from me, there's a good reason. And she turns and she looks right at you, Virginia. That was a nice score. Thank you. I earned it. And uh, you happen to notice which street it was on, right? You know, I'm not that great with directions. Boston isn't quite laid out quite the way Chicago is. Uh, I, I'm more of a landmark to know where I am type of person. <clears throat> mm. Well, no objections to showing an out-of-towner how we do things in Boston. But we do things a certain way. Huh. So, of course, you'll want to know that that street is one of my streets. Mm. Of course it is. And that's why I'm here in your lovely office. Indeed, because you know, I think, I think maybe it was a misunderstanding. I think maybe you wanna have a positive first impression here in Boston. And I think there's a way that we can work that out. If you can help me with a little matter. Well, I'm all about the curtsies. I thought you might be. Pete didn't raise a rude little girl. <clears throat> you knew my father. I like to know what's going on. All the way in Chicago. But he made a couple of trips. Ah, okay. It turns out Pete's had some secrets. <clears throat> oh. <sighs> so, what? what's this favor? So, did you all hear about the Leary brothers? The Leary brothers. You didn't. None of, of course, I've heard about the about. Leary brothers. Everybody's heard about the Leary brothers. Yeah, of course, I've heard about these Leary brothers. Who are these Leary brothers? I don't know. That's why I have the both of you here. <laughs> she looks uh, very interested in Zelda seeming to recognize the name. She goes, "Well, then you'll ha I'll have to see what you know that I don't." But the Leary brothers pulled the job. And they must have picked the wrong spot because they were all found dead in the mansion they were planning to rob. Those they should have cased it. <clears throat> well, Zelda the Magnificent knows all and sees all. And, and yes, I, this is very odd. I will admit we probably have to find out what happened here. The police are saying they quarreled over the loot and killed each other. But I knew those boys. They were good boys. Can I, I see if this... I actually... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm curious if I do know who they are. Sure. If um, they have a reputation, like maybe, maybe education of my, you know, sort of like information gathering skills. Quick check, Becca. What would you recommend for a good way to figure this out? Maybe just education? Yeah, let's do it. No. No idea. Um they uh stealthy. Yeah, but uh Velma just say they 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 were they heard that some big wig was out of town. They busted into his house to see what there was to take. Uh they were going to give me their cut because they were good boys who knew how things worked. I just spent an afternoon with Mrs. Leary crying on my shoulder. I take care of my people. And by the way, 
I can be very generous to folks who know how things work. But either way... So you're saying these good, good boys were gonna give you a treat? Okay. They, they were. They were good boys. <laughs> um, they knew to, to pay a little bit my way when they work in my town. Let's, let's talk about the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the return on this, because I like that part of the conversation. Yeah, because you get to skim off the top all the time. What do we get? You get permission to work in my town, first of all. But certain other favors can be arranged. What would you be looking for? I'm, I, I am 100% not ready to answer this question. I was not ready for this. So I'm actually looking at everybody else to see <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what so they we, have. My terms are $50 a week. I want to be your eye on the street. I'll give you information. I'll give you photographs, whatever you need. But I like in on the Vaughn Enterprise. She Velma looks at Virginia. This person you brought fifty dollars a week. Is she made of solid gold? Wait till you hear my rate. Okay, I'll settle for five. Uh, <clears throat> she she. <clears throat> She she means five percent. She means five percent of of the findings. That's right. Yep. That yeah, is what you mean. that is also I, I my give her rate. A look like yeah 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 yeah. Thanks for covering. You're right. I have no idea how to negotiate. I have not been retired as a police officer long. This is the tricky part. Listen, five in my in my in my early days, I was performing magic tricks for nickels. So this is great. I'm just here <laughs> along. Don't let her know. Yeah, that is also my rate. Five percent each of the total findings. Because something tells me that if you're not telling me what the loot is, we want a piece. That's fifteen percent for the group. She does some mental math here and says so whatever you all find in the course of this job, you're gonna keep 15% of it and give me the rest? No, no, we keep 85 and you get um, five from each of us. She, she, she gets, she definitely gets the rest. This is a good start. I gotta say though, and you a look crosses her face that you weren't quite prepared for. <clears throat> she looks upset. Uh, like something actually got to her. You know I like a good score, and I like my share of a good score. But I don't believe for a second that those boys killed each other. So this might not be the safest job you ever pull. All I really want to know is what happened to them. So even Let's if you see. walk out of this with no loot, I will owe you a favor. Sound good? A favor from Velma Vaughn. Each? small favor each, but even the small ones go a long way. Velma, I know we're meeting for the first time, but I want you to know I will take that favor and that cut, but there's also a satisfaction for me. Any time that the police have come up with some explanation, they're usually full of shit. That's why I left the force. That's why I've been on my own. That's why I became someone that needs to find the truth. So you giving me an opportunity to do that, it feels real good. She looks back at Virginia being like, maybe she is solid gold. Hmm? I'm sliding <laughs> one more thing on the table though. Because if you think those boys didn't kill each other, something did. And there's a reason you're hiring us and while Jimmy is dumb as a box of rocks, he's big and strong, so there's a reason you're not hiring him. So I want one thing, one more thing on the table. If you know about me, I'm assuming you know about my old ladies. <laughs> Anything happens to me, I want to make sure they're taken care of. 
Velma is impressed. Velma uh, likes very much the way that you think. Um, Velma believes in taking care of people. Um, That's right. We got uh, two cats in every household. We got uh, Easy Street for all of the late, all of the ladies. I cats in every house. <laughs> two. I want two cats. We keep each other company. One dies, you replace that cat. That's they right. They don't even know. Get a cat that looks just like the previous cat before they wake up. <laughs> name is... them both the same name. They'll never know. Mentally take Leave a cats. tag. Leave a bow with the name tag so they know. Right. All right. Uh, that can be arranged. Hmm. I, uh, that one will be for free. Thank you. Good answer. Uh, she says, uh, and one more thing I can do sweeten the deal with while we're talking. You really don't have to. We've agreed several times over, but we'll take it. <laughs> I told you I was generous. The muckety muck whose house the Learys were breaking into. Some guy looks at Zelda. Memphis the Great. <gasps> Wait, just so before we, I, I do know Memphis the Great, right? Yes. You know oh! of him. So... Memphis the Great? He's the great. Well, not the greatest because, you know, yeah. Houdini, he was the greatest. But yes, Memphis the Great. I am honored to even be in the presence of whatever schmuck thing he just did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for our audience, uh, at, with the untimely death of Harry Houdini, about a year before this game is taking place, Memphis the Great became the most famous of the stage magicians. Uh, he's got a whole faux Egyptian act he does, but his illusions are incredible and he has been packing them in for decades uh on the stage magic circuit uh and now you maybe have an inkling of why zelda is here um as belma says yeah memphis the great and whoever was watching over that house i can understand why they thought there'd be some good stuff in there but uh nobody thought it would end with that much blood Where's Memphis now? Nah, out of town, apparently. They'd been watching the place for some time and hadn't seen a sign of the guy. He's still not seen since the break-in? I don't know. Interesting. Mm. Just picking up clues, because I'm good at clue stuff. Fair enough. Uh, I can tell you... I can tell you, Inspector Edwards is the one who closed the case on there. He might have some more info for you. And, uh, oh, I can sweeten the deal a little bit more and help you oh. all to get a look. I feel like it's got Again, something to do with these the magic guys. the deal is sweet. It's a really sweet deal. We're she's in. starting to feel well, offended yes, when she's just like, I just want to be nice. I have a reputation to uphold. <laughs> and she said, I, I just... I, I don't know what happened. I know the Learys didn't turn on each other. I knew those boys. But I also know, and she looks at Zelda, I know how magic people are with their secrets. I'm that's not right. saying that's got anything to, to do with it. Although that was very threatening. You take but your secrets to the grave. Whose grave, though? Ah, the plot thickens. And she slides out three tickets. She says, there's uh, the big guy in Boston right now is this Harold Hawkins kid. He's got a show tonight at the Wilbur Theater. If you want to start checking out the magic scene, you might start there. I, I'm going to have, have both eyes on this kid. Do I perhaps know Inspector Edwards for my time on the force? As a matter of fact, you do. Edwards, uh, it's that scumbag. <laughs> Oh, you've met? He's, a, he's one of those good types. Family man. Follows the book by the letter. Is that true? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, great. But, it, but, you know, the best cop in Boston still can't necessarily get out of going along with the story sometimes. 
Sometimes the story, the one you gotta sell to the public, is not the true story. Sometimes you gotta throw out the book if you wanna really get to the bottom of something. And that's what I couldn't stand in that place. Edwards, he was the worst of them. Too good. All right. Velma says, after this we'll be square. I'll owe you a favor. I, I can forget all about that misunderstanding at the bank. You'll maybe start to learn your geography a little bit in Boston. I can get a map after this. <sighs> and uh, I would appreciate it if you can help me figure out what to tell Mrs. Leary about what happened to her boys. We'll get to help. the bottom of everything. She might not like the answer. No, we're going to need to bring a cake along if we're going to be bearing her some bad news. Two tears. Mm-hmm. One for each brother. We should go check out uh, <laughs> the Harold Hawkins. Uh, uh, one more drink before heading to the Wilbur Theater. That's right. I've never denied one before. And Velma, which you may or may not know, she does not often do, lifts a glass with you. Mm -hmm. Oh. I can sense this might be a productive new set of relationships. Welcome to Boston, she says to Virginia. To new friendships. To two-tiered cakes. With buttercream frosting and two cats in every household. Cheers, ladies. Cats and cakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, she waves her hand dismissively, as, as done talking as she was silent before. All right, we head out. Um, ladies. It's a pleasure to be on this journey with you to get to the bottom of something. I haven't had a juicy, a juicy case in quite a while. Just a bunch of cheating husbands staking mm. stuff out, hiding so in the actual. shadows. Yeah, I don't know about anything that's going on in this case, but I, uh, so I'll tell you that something about this seems fishy, and I don't know about you, but if there is something fishy, I will sniff it out. Can always okay. count on you, Zelda. My eyes might not be so good, but my nose is still intact. Virginia, how was what big was the score that has got Velma so up in arms? <clears throat> Somewhere in between first and <clears throat> Wow, that big, huh? Oh shit. <sighs> if I could whistle, I would whistle. Anything we should do before the Wilbur Theater? I wouldn't mind taking pictures of who goes in and out of the joint for at least 30 minutes beforehand. That's oh, case in the place might not be a bad idea there. Since you yeah. got the photography skills and all. Follow me! I want to lead them up onto the roof through the fire escape. I love fire escapes. Heck yeah, so you're going to stake out the Wilbur? Yeah, if y'all are down. Sure. All right, fantastic. So the Wilbur Theater, uh, beautiful theater, built in 1914. It's got brick uh, exterior with white columned front windows on the top row and entrances on the bottom row. Uh, it's got an elegant simplicity and the name the Wilbur Theater written and etched into the white stone uh, in the top. And it is not hard to find a good vantage street across the vantage point across the street um, and uh, about a story up. You can see inside, if any of y'all have ever been in there, you know that there's uh, the orchestra, the gallery, um, and then uh, the backstage space. So do you look for an angle on the people coming in and out backstage, the people coming in and out of the front, or try to capture both or a third thing? There's three of us. I'm going to take right. backstage. All right. Uh, well, so there was the backstage. There was the people coming in, and I'm sorry. What was the third? 
I'm just in, I was leaving the possibilities open if you wanted a. Thing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I think. Uh, well, I would overwhelming. like to keep an eye on on if if I could watch his actual act. So if I could keep an eye on the stage itself, because you have uh, in addition. Oh, I don't yeah, we make had a magic show. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I mean no. pre show. Sorry. <laughs> I I don't want to miss a show. I love a good show. Exactly. So yeah. I think. Uh, because I'm not exactly dressed for uh, the occasion of mingling in the front, I'll be looking backstage. Maybe you'll find uh, the dressing room with some sweet duds. Yeah. Play you a little dress up. Me, though, I gotta say. I mean, uh, overall suit ya. Um, you. <laughs> uh, I want to stake out the front from the building across the street because I love being on top of buildings, in the shadows. And I, I, I wager that a lot of faces going in and out will be harder to remember for most people, but I do this every day. <laughs> You're starting and I will, to get- I will probably be mingling in with the crowd uh, somewhat close to the stage. Nice. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead with your ticket uh, as our, our watchers hang out on the side. Um, so unfortunately, Virginia, as you go to try to get a good view on the door out back, uh, you can see two dogs are being led inside the, that door as you're just approaching mm. the other end of the alley on the side. Um, they look like, like trained guard dogs, um, and behind them you see wheeling in a couple of, uh, last pieces of equipment, and it's around that time as you're looking for some place to stand out, that the stagehands see you uh, and they just start furiously waving you off. No fans, no, no, no audience. The, 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 thank you, sir or madam, please. Uh, the, the, uh, and he looks like he's trying to remember his speech. The magician requests the honor of you not seeing this. Uh, and he, he kicks you out of the alley. Can I try and convince him that I'm crew? Sure. Uh, that was fast talk, I feel like. Yeah, so I'm gonna try and convince him that I'm crew, and the magician called me to tighten a few screws on a box somewhere. Heck yeah. All Let's right. see what uh, happens. Do, do, do. Fast talk. Where's my fast talk? It's gonna be a hard fast talk roll, I'm sorry okay. to say. Hard I mean, fast you, talk roll. You need roll. to hit half of your number. <sighs> Bottom left. Okay. I feel like I've scrolled past it a million times. Oh, yes, I have. Every single time. Ooh. Ah! I had hope. He, you almost had him for a second, but he goes, No, I, I, I know every techie on the Wilbur. You ain't one of them. Wilbur. Oh, I thought this was the Orpheum. Another Wolf guy pulling rabbits. Three blocks that way. What are you from out of town? Let's go with that. <clears throat> and he waves you off. <sighs> no, uh, MK is up on the uh, fire escape of the opposing building, which is a small apartment building. Um, That's right. And uh, you are scoping out the crowds as they come in. You watched Zelda make her way through, which means you got to enjoy the fact that heads turn everywhere Zelda goes. Um, as the little ripple in the crowd of her making her way inside went. Um, and are you looking out for anything in particular? Uh, well, what I was hoping to do at some point when I know that my friends have arrived, I wanted to do uh, a magic act so that I could cause a distraction so that they can uh, investigate, as it were. Absolutely. Once you've got them all in the, the uh, my brain has ceased. Lobby is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got there? Uh, then, then that's totally on deck. Uh, but MK, in the meantime, as you scan yes. the crowd, did you have any particular goal in mind? Okay, so um, we're looking for whereabouts of Memphis the Great. So I want to keep a close eye on anyone who seems like their hands move a little bit fast in this crowd. Someone that seems okay. like they're in with the magician crowd and maybe would be suitable for questioning if I could get a message to Zelda or maybe run into them later. 
Well, you notice one really suspicious builder and figure, which is Zelda the Magnificent, um, making her way through that crowd, clearly drawing heads. But, um, make a spot hidden roll, and let's see what turns up. Okay, I aim my little Kodak, and I peep. Uh, there's a rat that's kind of on this roof, and I kick it away from my foot. Uh, get away from me, ah! little. <gasps> I succeed. Heck yeah, okay. Um, you have identified uh, several really interesting citizens in this crowd. Um, for instance, you just spotted a city councilman with a woman who is definitely not his wife. You got a picture of that one. Um, That's gonna and... be, uh, maybe a source of income later if I'm feeling <laughs> desperate. Um, and you have spotted a, a couple of different folks who might have hands that seem a little busier than they should be. Um, there was one with sort of black hair and green eyes, um, but he's sort of on the short side. Um, but you kind of tucked that guy away for future reference. Um, truthfully, he's wearing a nice suit, but not that nice. So there's nothing that sort of shouts Memphis the Great about him. But it does look like he had a suspiciously smooth handing over of his ticket at the front. Um, just one of those practice glances. Hmm? Why was the ticket up his sleeve? Just a hand to the person that rips it. It's unnecessary, you know? Hmm. It's really gratuitous. Um, but that's it. That's about all you get from the crowd. And it's just about, uh, they, they ring that, they, they ring the bell that I've invented uh, that says 10 minutes before your need to sit down because I don't know if they did the flashing lights thing. They definitely had a bell and lights and all the things. I'm going to uh, slide down the fire escape and wait out front, see if, uh, catch Zelda's eye and give her a nod and, and wait until Virginia comes around. So at this wink, am I able to do my magic trick so that I can uh, distract as they are entering the vicinity? Sure. <laughs> all right. So I, ladies and gentle, ladies and gentle folk, Children of all ages, gather round. I am going to show you something of magic trick, the likes of which you have never seen before. Now, no, 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 come closer, come closer. You're not gonna see anything from back there. Come close. No, now you're too close. Take, take two steps back. There! Now, I shall show you uh, a magic trick uh, that I, first of all, I will say that you will see nothing up this sleeve and nothing up this sleeve. And so, with uh, my magic wand I and my take off my turban that I'm wearing, and I can see that there's nothing in the turban, and I wave my magic wand and I say the magic words, words that have not been uttered only in secrecy for the past hundreds of years. And so, I, with a wave, I say, uh, Pfizer, Medina, AstraZeneca, <laughs> poof! And I would like for like a little furry hamster to appear inside the turban. <laughs> please, please make an arts craft stage magic roll right now, because I need to know what happens. <laughs> stage oh, magic! <laughs> Here's the thing. No! Spend some luck! Oh. If you want, you have something called luck points. And hey, you listen. could spend some. I'm four points away from a success. So I will say that yes, I will spend these luck points because otherwise I want the hamster to be alive when it when it appears. So <laughs> can't just have a dead hamster in a theater. You know, with these children Unlucky. around, they get really distraught. Yeah. And I so I will spend were... those four points but, yeah. of luck. All right. Uh, and with that successful stage magic roll, um, you do the flourish inside your turban and suddenly out of nowhere, a startled uh, looking orange and white furry creature uh, is running through your things. And a mix of uh, applause and a few sort of ah! shrieks. Ladies and the... gentle folk, from the depths of the ether, it has appeared. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No. Yes. Applause is good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's a wonderful show. Um, they seem to be assuming that you are just an official warm-up act in the lobby for the show that they are here to see. And you can see there are posters all over. Uh, Harold Hawkins is uh, young and handsome, um, doesn't seem to have settled on any kind of persona yet other than, hello, I am young and handsome, which is working for him. But uh, I will say, do you take, as you all take a look around at the crowd, and MK, you got this with your spot, notice, it's like a good crowd. People are excited. But it's not a full house. Hmm. Like there's some holes in the orchestra, and uh, there's a good amount of room in the balcony. Uh, you know, it's 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 a good crowd, um, but no, just not standing room only. I so. edge over to Zelda and I kind of not looking around, nod to her, and whisper, "You know, I saw Memphis the Great once, and he had twice this crowd." You know, he's just starting out. He doesn't even have any of the flair and, you know, the, 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 his shirt isn't even ruffled. Such oh. a noob. No, no, you need the puffy shirt. How yeah. can you call yourself a magician without at least four not a, ruffles? Not, not a single puff. sequin in that suit. What's wrong that's, with him? Yeah, that's the real Who problem. Who trained him? Mm. Feathers. I'd like to see feathers every once in a while. Yes, I have questions. Yeah. My main question is, why... Would this theater book such a small act that can't even sell half a room? That's that a great is a question. very good point. The lights are flickering, and it seems like the show is about oh, to start. Oh, our seats, uh, are they good You've seats got or bad seats? Great seats. Row B seats. Do you see oh. this? Velma you know said she was generous. Been? and What? Do you know how long it's been since I watched a show that I didn't sneak into? This is way better than the rafters. I, I feel I feel like a VIP. I love this. As you make your way down to the center front uh, of the elegant interior of the Wilbur Theater, um, you uh, feel the show is about to begin. Let's see. Uh, all right. And now, Harold Hawkins' show for the good but not so loud crowd uh, at the Wilbur Theater. An acrobatic troupe opens the proceedings. Against a plain red back cloth, they perform feats of juggling and balancing, escalating the difficulty by replacing their batons first with knives, then with flaming torches. I whisper, hmm. I saw how they did that. <laughs> the act climaxes with a dramatic leap to complete a three-tiered human pyramid. Tears, the theme of the night. I saw how After they did short... that too. <laughs> After a short musical interlude, the curtains part to reveal Harold Hawkins. And he looks just as handsome as his posters. He is elegant in white tie and tails. He has those Rudolph Valentino eyes oh. that are driving the audiences crazy. Uh, behind him, the stage is completely bare. Even the building's brick walls are visible. Hawkins steps through the open curtains, which then close behind him. And with a brief wave of his hands, he begins a silent, billiard ball manipulation routine. He holds the ball between two fingers, transferring it up and down his spread fingers, slowly at first and then with incredible speed. The, uh, let's see, sorry. The ball defies gravity for a few seconds, rolling along the underside of his hand. It changes color. A second ball appears. The balls jump invisibly from hand to hand. A third ball appears and then a fourth. Finally, Hawkins catches a top hat thrown from the wings, drops the four balls into it, casually turning it over and dropping it onto his head. Where the balls go? <laughs> yeah, well, they I'd don't like to come see him pouring out. Of wallets. <laughs> <laughs> he flashes that million dollar smile that he's becoming known for. Uh, and uh, as he takes applause and steps back, the curtains part behind him. And now the entire stage has been covered in colorful fabrics and an arrangement from sources all over the world, kind of indiscriminately but impressively combined with cabinets and couches. And the whole audience gasps as if from nothing, this fantasy palace has been summoned that he steps back into. And now he speaks for the first time. Welcome to my humble home. Humble. May I 
as I begin the tour of the mysteries I am to present tonight, I have a couple of volunteers. A man and perhaps a lady? I nudge, <laughs> yes, I, I <laughs> nudge Virginia. Uh, I raise a hand. <laughs> I take off my fascinator and pull up my sports coat and I raise my hands. Maybe you'll think I'm a dude. I'm trying to like move my hand out of Zelda's, but she's surprisingly strong for her age. <laughs> <laughs> Put my mic on. He looks out across. Um, right here! This <gasps> one. These two. Perfect. These two. The couple in the second row, would you please join me? My lady. <clears throat> All right. Uh, and as he pulls you up on stage, you can see that up close, he is that handsome. The makeup is very thick. The lights are looking great on him. Uh, but uh, he... Love good thick makeup. Yeah. Pancake. They, He's got good it. blending along the chin. Mm, yeah, it's good contouring, detail. especially mm -hmm. for the time. Yeah. So he starts to walk around showing off his humble abode. He goes, ah, yes, I got that bowl on a trip to Shanghai. I got that cabinet on a trip to Morocco. Wait, and sorry. I got... Oh, to clarify, yeah. we're inside of a house that appeared on the stage? Essentially, they've erected... Uh, for what your your rational brain is telling you that it is conventional stagecraft to sort of put a bunch of stuff on, but it's difficult to overcome well overcome the impression of like that stage was bare like a second ago. Mm -hmm. How did you get all that stuff out there? Hmm? Mm. Interesting. Um. Uh. And so as he walks around, he goes, "Oh, this bowl, that cabinet," and he comes to a box uh, on low wheels, a low deep box on wheels, and he suddenly notices there's a vase on the ground. Well, this is this isn't right at all. Maid, and uh, a a long suffering looking young woman with finger curled blonde hair comes on stage in a maid outfit, and he begins dressing her down because this vase has fallen down and the flowers have been trampled on the ground. And he says, "Well, there has to be some sort of consequence." And he opens the low deep box. Hmm. And the assistant gives a sigh and climbs inside. What a dark public entertainment that we all take pleasure in this maid being scolded. Did you say that out loud? Face. <laughs> I whisper Are... all this to Virginia, but I don't say it aloud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I loudly say, pick up the vase. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, great but yes. storyteller, great storyteller, if you will, would I... Uh, Zelda the Magnificent be able to uh, check and make a spot hidden check while all of this is going on in the hullabaloo? Would I be able to laser focus in my with all my years of training over what shenanigans might be taking place at this moment? Absolutely. Give me a spot hidden roll right now. Or uh, your choice of spot <gasps> hidden or your stagecraft. Oh, dang. Uh, oh. I no, will yeah. say, yes, I will stick with the, with the spot hidden there. Heck yeah. Uh, your spot hidden role reveals, interestingly, you have learned one of the most important secrets of magic, which is don't look where they want you to look. Keep your eyes where you want them. And in this case, while he's directing everyone's attention to the vase and the flowers and the assistant who's climbing into that box whose lid he is now ominously lowering over her, you've noticed his face. That handsome very together face. He's kind of not as confident. Something sort of, he seems dizzy for a moment. He it seems like he's kind of lost it. Uh. Um, just a momentary pause. Um, it's, no one else notices, but there's a, uh, there's something on his face that isn't quite right. But uh, as he does this illusion, his mate has climbed in the box. Um, he has waved his hands over it uh, he has asked, please, my gentleman friend, would you hold the lady's hands? <clears throat> it is obviously me, and I put my hand oh, out. It's usually me because of the hat. <laughs> my, my guests, I, I regret you being forced to witness this disorder. I like to keep a better house. Uh, if you, my, my other guests, would please grab the lady's ankles. 
I mean, I usually buy her dinner first, but okay. <laughs> His composure doesn't crack at that one. Uh, but uh, as you both hold the maid's hands and legs, he reaches behind him and he pulls out a saw. Mm. And as he goes through that box, piece by piece, he talks about how impossible it is to get work of the standards that you need to present uh, the kind of household he wants to run. And he has sawed the box completely in half. He pulls them aside just far enough to look in and he <gasps> shudders at what he sees. And he pulls the boxes completely apart as you are holding the two halves of the assistant. Now say here, sir. There are certain punishments which are acceptable for breaking a vase, and certain that are um, overstepping. And he turns from you to the audience. Does my guest have a point? Should she yes! be forgiven? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Zelda leads a, a crowd as the audience goes, oh, oh, quarter, 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 Don't try this at home, anybody! <laughs> <laughs> and he says, oh, I regret my hasty actions. Many years of faithful service to be rewarded in such a way. Let us see if we cannot restore what has been up, torn asunder. And he pushes both sides of the box back together and he lifts the lid and out pops the maid uh, with a smile on her face and gives a little bow. This is my faithful assistant, Edith. Edith, you need to make sure that you're getting benefits here, okay? Let's talk about it later. She looks a little thrown. Uh, uh, and, and she makes her way swiftly off stage as he reaches down, uh, clears up the, the flowers on the ground, lifts them into the air, and with a flourish of his hand, they are a fresh bouquet, which he hands to Virginia. He says, thank you so much to my assistants, and dismisses you back to the audience. And each of you now get a spot hidden roll, if you would, please. Okay. Here we go. Yes. Oh, heck yeah. This time, all three of you catch it. He's good. His act is good, but something throws him for a second. Um, he just sort of mentally off in the distance for a sec before he's back and he's together and he's thanking you and he's smiling his megawatt smile and he's seeing you down to the audience. Uh, after that trick is done, that was the only volunteers section, um, the program continues with various illusions and some light comedy. Edith, from the first trick, returns as his assistant in a glamorous evening gown. Uh, he performs confidently but unremarkably until this next trick. They wheel out two intricately decorated and large upright wooden cabinets on stage. Now they've got tall enough wheels that you can see there's clearance between them and the stage beneath. Each one has a door positioned to face the opposite wings of that stage. And as each door is open, a dim eerie glow emanates from them. Uh, would anyone like to make me a spot hidden uh, and education roll? Something that would pass both of those. If you have archeology span or history or stage magic, you could use that as well. But Let's it has see. to pass both of those. Spot hidden uh, I... and Ooh, my history is not good. I oh, can do education. a stage magic roll. Oh, <gasps> extreme <gasps> success. Yes! Extreme success, MK. Eagle I'm... eyes, you have noticed on this whole uh, jumbled mishmash of this is from Shanghai and this is from Morocco and and I've put them all together into make to make my stage show decor. Prominently missing from that is any Egypt themed things, but you can see that these hmm. cabinets have carvings on them that look like hieroglyphs, but they've been painted over. They've just been painted black. It just it's an interesting little note about these cabinets. They are I'll the only Egyptian thing you've seen in this later. show, but they've been painted black. Hmm? All right. So, once he's got the cabinets out, uh, sorry guys. Um, I know myself that whenever something's stolen, I want to paint over any important details. 
Ooh. Anything identifiable? And someday, maybe millions of years into the future, maybe a hundred serial numbers. <sighs> <laughs> he now goes into a story about the stresses. As you've seen, it can give one kind of a temper, but a lot of it is just from the life of being on tour and these tremendous travel times. Back and forth to the glamorous capitals of the world, to the busy streets of 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 of, uh, uh, of Tokyo, um, to all of these trips, you have to spend so much time getting there and getting back, and one misses one's family, one's miss one misses one's bed, one leaves things behind and regrets them. You have to develop the most tedious hobbies to spend time on a boat, and I must confess, aeroplane travel. It's not good for my stomach. So this was a difficulty. As much as I love my tours, I love my public, I hate how long it takes to get any place until I invented the following boxes. And he flings himself in one of the boxes from the outside and instantly appears out of the other. Well, what else? Um, <clears throat> Cross, flying across the stage, clearly nothing in the middle, clearly nothing underneath them, and takes a giant bow. Can I get a spot hidden roll, please? Yes. Uh, as I jump to my feet, pounding my hands together in, in applause, <sighs> I spot something. Is this a spot hidden roll for everybody or for yes. just... Okay. everybody. Yeah, I failed mine. Ooh, a All hard right. success. I had my eyes on him the whole time. <laughs> you know what you're looking for. Uh, and you know, first of all, that that is not any trick you've ever seen. You know a lot of good tricks, uh, but you can't quite figure out how that one was done. Um, and MK and Zelda, you both spot this time. It's even easier to catch than it was last time. After that trick, he looks disoriented for a second. Just lost. And then he's back. And then he's back. And he's on, hmm. says, for my final trick of the night. If my lovely assistant would have joined me one last time. I know I can be hard on my assistant. She works so hard and she's so dedicated to our work together. And so I asked her, what would you like for your birthday this year? And she said, you know, I would just like to relax and get away from it all. Give us some vacation time. <laughs> well, uh, it's weird. He keeps his composure very well for hecklers. It's strange that something <laughs> else seems to throw him. Um, but uh, his assistant climbs up onto a table in the center of the stage. And he says, I mean, really relax. You don't seem fully relaxed. And as she makes an exaggerated motion, she begins lifting into the air. And... Uh, with no covering or other such artifices, she is rising to float in the air above Hawking's head. He demonstrates that nothing's holding her. He picks up a metal hoop and he passes it completely over her body from toe up to head and from head all the way down to toe. And then he stands to the side to collect his applause, but before the sound of clapping can reach him, there are a couple of other sounds that you don't think are supposed to be there. Ping, 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 ping. And she begins to tilt and she begins to tilt and her feet are high, but her head is low and she is sliding. She is sliding backwards out of the air until she crashes I'm onto the stage and catch her. Or you leap from the second row. Um, you fall over the row right in front of you. And as you rise up and get your head above stage level, you are right there to see that there is blood gushing <gasps> out of the assistant's head as the theater fills with gasps. And we go to break. <gasps> oh! He deserves it.
What's up, everybody? Thanks so much for tuning in to the Calyx. If you're watching the VOD, thank you for that. Just want to shout out our sponsor one more time. Thanks so much to Chaosium. They are the publishers of Call of Cthulhu, and we are playing Call of Cthulhu, so that's very convenient for everyone involved. Um, if you want to get in on this action, we have a discount code for you, Calyx. 2021 tonight's scenario is house of memphis in mansions of madness that's the book you should pick up but you should also pick up their keeper rule book and their malleus monstrorum their bestiary two tome book you should pick up uh so many awesome things i mean investigator handbook the starter set makes a great gift and we look really good if you use our discount code so thank you so much for that and without further ado let's get back into the wilbur theater and our keeper amy dallin will bring you back into the madness oh, the audience uh can tell that was not supposed to happen this should not be happening the assistant should not be lying in a crumpled heap on the sta floor stage right now uh as from the stage right wing a harried looking manager uh, comes out with the curtain rapidly closing behind him. He says, uh, uh, I'm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there, there has been an accident. Uh, there, this will be the conclusion of tonight's performance. Please see the box office for any questions, if you could all, uh, is, is there a doctor, uh, in, in the house at this time? If you would, please join me on stage. And then he sort of points at MK, who is closest to the stage. He was like, oh, could, you, uh, could you assist uh, me, sir? Yes. Yes, of course. He could just mm -hmm. tell that you were rushing up there, and, and in his panic, uh, you'd both duck behind the curtain um, as the audience springs up noisily um, and makes their way out of the theater. Do you all follow MK, or uh, do you split up at this time? I'm gonna follow NK. I hold open the curtain and usher with my hand for them to come with me. If I'm in there. Yes, I will. I'll follow um, along. Does any of you have a uh, first aid or medicine? <laughs> that is a very good question. I have a, a little first aid. I think I can injure someone, but I don't think I can heal someone. My medicine <laughs> is one. <laughs> Uh, I got a little first aid. I could do that. My medicine is not so good. Listen, I didn't go to medical school, but I got a little bit of first aid training. That was my Girl Scout days. I've patched up uh, a person here and there, but uh, my hands are shaking at the sight of all this blood. I can Ugh. I can do a single stitch, but not a whatever this is. All right. Uh, oh, this poor I assistant. failed miserably. <laughs> Does anyone want to push? No. Um, and you don't have to spend luck for that. You can push a roll by trying it again, but sort of risking a little more this time. I take a deep breath. I know that this is, uh, it might cause, you know, nightmares and psychological trauma. I might make the situation wor worse. I might make myself a target of suspicion, but there was a woman before me who was bleeding out, and I feel an obligation to do something. Yeah. My shit yes! paid off. You should be a doctor next. <sighs> Maybe I will. Uh, and somehow you are able to go right to the spot, and what you determine is that she is badly shaken up, and the wound definitely will need to be treated, but she is going to be okay. Is um, it a head wound? Uh, it is a head wound, but you are uh, able to figure out where they need to put pressure on while they wait uh, for an ambulance to get here um, and sort of direct them how best to lift her um, and get her into a more comfortable position. They, they just use that table that she was sitting on um, in the meantime. Yeah, I, uh, I rip off one of the banners that was hanging over the table that has the magician's insignia on it and wrap it tightly around her head. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Harold Hawkins, who's been just standing there dumbfounded, looks up at you with gratitude shining in his eyes. Um, and I, I don't know what to say. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, while they're calling for help, or, uh, uh, come, come back to backstage for a moment. I, uh, forgive me. I'm Harold. And you are? Rhodes. 
Private Eye. I shake his hand heartily. Rhodes. And your companions? A friend. You must recognize Zelda the Magnificent. Yes, young man, I know I realize at your age you probably don't know all of the great magicians that have come before you. Uh, but yes, I am Zelda the Magnificent. It is a pleasure to meet you. He, he's pausing for a minute, his gentility bumping up against... Uh, do you want to try a trick? Can we head back Are to the Are you saying this to... Are you saying this to me as a storyteller? Are you saying this to me as a... Uh, yes, okay. Uh, yes, you know, in order to show uh, what the kids these days would call their street cred, I would have to, of course, show a magic trick in front of this young one right here. Uh, okay, okay. All right, come a little closer, son. Come a little closer, and I'm going to show you. Uh, this is one of my greatest uh, illusions or feats, as you might say. Uh, come closer, come closer. I'm gonna need you to to help uh, assist me uh, if you were if you would uh, in in a certain way. All right. What what can I do for you? What I'm going to do, something that, uh, you know, you've seen a lot of these strange, these uh, stage tricks, but have you seen uh, these feats of mysticism from uh, secrets of ancient lands, some that you never even heard of you can in see storybooks? A in he likes secrets. Yes. Uh, so what I would like to do is I am going to read your palm presents his palm now uh seeing as this man this gentleman here as as not only i but my companions have seen that he was a little verklempt as he was doing these uh these tricks a little sweaty that's fine i know but a little more than just stage lights i said it's very very concerning for me so i just wanted to take a look a closer look by touching his hand and making some eye contact and seeing some insight into this fella of of what ill doings he's been getting himself into all right um please roll me your choice of stage magic or psychology I'm going to do a psychology one in here. I feel very good about this. Very confident. Yeah. A hard success. Ooh. It's funny. Now that the stage lights are not shining on him, you can see that the handsome man from the posters, about 30 years old, looks like he has not been sleeping. Looks like he has not been taking care of himself looks like the makeup is having to work a lot harder than it used to to even mm. out uh that complexion and give it a glow of health um he's sagging there's something off in his gaze um and uh he it, it's it's enough to sort of the the patter that you give him as you read his palm intrigues him and sort of soothes him um and he feels because of the professionalism of the way that you are walking him through his palm reading, he feels a little bit more at home, and he invites you all back to his dressing room. Oh, well, yes, that's very kind of you. And uh, what I would like to do is also give him a handkerchief, because again, very sweaty. <laughs> he dabs uh, politely at his forehead. As soon as we're led into the green room, I, or his dressing room, I find the drink cart. Well, I guess I could go for a nightcap, of course, sure. So you go looking for the drink cart, and you can see that it is in his dressing room, which contains a costume rack, a dressing mirror, and a small locker in the corner. Um, he gravitates towards it as soon as he's in the room, and you'll notice as you talk that periodically he's retreating back towards it. Um, and, uh... How long have you known Edith? Uh, this must be terribly difficult for you. Drink for everyone? Yes, please. Oh, yes. I'm a very big fan of gin. <laughs> Noted. She's been working with me for a year now since I went out on my own. She's the perfect partner. 
play. Hold on. Something I on your mind? Couldn't do it without her. Well, and he looks around, uh, and as if he's admitting something that wasn't obvious, he goes, "That was not supposed to happen." I'm terribly we know. worried. Has Here's something been is... troubling you? You seem a little stressed, Bubby. Well, ah, uh, but no, I, I can't think of anything that might be going on. Uh, and at that point, there's a knock at the door. And uh, in to the dressing room runs a, a young woman with dark hair, pl uh, plainly but elegantly dressed. Um, clearly very worried expression on her face as she runs in. Harold, what's happened? It's Ingrid, oh, I'm so sorry, my friends. This is my fiance, Ingrid Schwartz. I thought it was pretty typical for the magician to be sleeping with the assistant. Pardon me, Ingrid. You are engaged? Oh my goodness, this is such fabulous news. Mazel tov to you. Thank you. And she goes, oh, yes, I'm so sorry, very, very charmed. Um, she looks at Harold, are you, are you all right? Is Edith all right? Um, she's very politely ignoring the comment. Uh, you can tell that she's, you know, a, 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 a lot of studied politeness um, in this genteel young woman. Um, Speaking of studied, can I take a look around the room and see if there's anything it doesn't look like it would belong in a dressing room, perhaps something of sort of a mystical origin. I don't believe those tricks were really him. I think something or someone was aiding him. Mm -hmm. You absolutely yeah, something can. Something seems very off. You, uh, you, you, you can look around the dressing room. Uh, you will also notice that you saw on your way backstage uh, in the frenetic. Just once you were all back there, everybody started ignoring you as if you were part of the crew. Um, so it seems like you could probably go look in any direction, and you're sure you saw uh, some of the various tools used in the tricks just sitting around in their designated spots backstage, and you could probably get at them. Yeah, a uh, flashback to that moment as we walked by <laughs> where I slow my roll just a bit as I'm saying, does anyone want a drink? And I scope out all these instruments on the table. Excellent. Uh, give me a spot hidden real quick. Uh, MK or everyone? Uh, just for MK on this one. Okay. Oh, hard, hard success. success. So you have seen uh, the hoops, the... the uh, Small juggling balls, the uh, flaming torches now unlit, all of it laid out in their proper places. But you also see some of the larger elements. And you spotted as you were walking that uh, just way in the back, uh, there are two large boxes. And in front of them, there are a couple of guard dogs. Huh. And Mark. those large boxes look very familiar. They look about the same size as the ones you were paying attention to up on stage. Painted black with maybe some hieroglyphics that have been painted over. They seem like the ones. Hmm. As soon as I get the uh, chance to catch one of my compatriots uh, without outside of earshot of the magician and his fiance, I will I will whisper this to them. Excellent. Uh, do you all stay in the room while they're talking to each other, or do you duck outside? Uh, is can I look around the room really quick and yeah. see if there's any like food? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, There's nothing immediately obvious other than the drink cart, which was already discovered by MK. Um, and that's prohibition, that he keeps but we're back to. living our best lives here. It's yeah. the yeah. theater. And I'm very much just going to be like, very interesting decor, very interesting. Yes, oh, I see that this is pre-Columbian. However, most of the majority of this is Egyptian. And I would just like to take a closer look at anything that's unusual to me. You want to check inside the dressing room or out where all the props are? Uh, I will say, listen, I will say that uh, because I'm the way I am, I would have started this conversation and tailored it off as I walked out of the <laughs> 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 into the it. props. Okay, so uh, it sounds as if you all might be sort of ducking outside to go look uh, around a little bit. How yeah. distracted is is Harold? talking to Ingrid. Are, is he, are they like engrossed in conversation about what's happening to Edith? Or um, are they kind of very aware of our presence? 
because maybe one of us should stand, stick around to maybe question him, which I'm happy to do. But it seems like uh, the information is behind those guard dogs. Uh, they are currently uh, very engrossed, but they seem like they, they are not getting into... Ingrid keeps looking around at all of you, and based on her composure, you feel like uh, she's not going to... She's not even discussing... She hasn't even broken the sort of, like, what happened with your trick barrier uh -huh. of politeness in front of strangers. Uh, I want to grab a jar of olives from the bar cart. Uh -huh. I've mostly been looking for snacks just because uh, I don't want to deal with those dogs. <laughs> oh. So I'm going to be real polite and just smile like I'm happy it's dropping, but I'm going to grab a jar of olives from behind my back on the way out as we make our way over. Excellent. As you all duck out of the dressing room, can you give me a listen roll? Is this for everybody, or ah, is this everybody. just for Virginia? Ooh, MK. Okay. Uh, I'll leave you two alone to discuss the fiancé stuff. And then I turn on my detective ears. <laughs> and you do uh, very successfully. I have not been mentioning it, by the way, but anytime you have successfully used one of your skills tonight, please go ahead and put a check mark by it because that is going to mean that you can upgrade it uh, at the end of this adventure because you've successfully used that skill. Surprise, we're most of the way through the game and I remembered to tell you that. That's great. Um, Anytime's a good time. But uh, you're good at listening and soon you will be even better, Becca, uh, because right outside the window, you can hear the voices immediately getting a little bit louder. Um, and all of you can hear his half, but Becca can pick up both halves, uh, his loudness and her quietness, as she demands to know what happened um, with that trick. And it sounds as if she's urging him to seek medical help, and he is not into that suggestion. Um, and it sounds as if they may have discussed this before. Um, she's quiet but firm, in her discussions, and he loudly says, "Well, I, I know I, I, I know I must have rigged it wrong, but I just, I was, I was tired. I, I can't believe that this has happened. They say she's going to be okay, uh, and they, I, you can hear, uh, all is not well in paradise, um, is the impression that you get mm -hmm. as you make your way across to where." Two intimidating fluffy boys are standing in front of a pair of mysterious cabinets. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Does anyone have any experience with animals? I mean, mostly just running from them. I, know I we mean, we haven't just, talked about that, just... but there's definitely something weird with these cabinets, right? Something is off. And I will say, I don't know what to do with these dogs. Usually I deal with like hamsters and bunny yeah. rabbits. I, I, you know. Things you can pull out of the places and at the sleeve. Exactly. exactly. Um, well, I have something in my sleeve and I don't know if dogs take their cocktails dirty, but let's, let's roll a few of these over there and, 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 and see if it entices them enough where we can get them to go away. Absolutely. So you're going to roll some olives uh, off in a distracting direction to see if you can get those dogs out of there. Um, what is the closest equivalent to an animal handling check? That is a great question. <laughs> I mean, maybe like a hard psychology, but then again, this is like distraction. With yeah. the speed. Maybe that would be fast talk if it was a human. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is a very... We're going to call this a fast talk check. roll. You are fast talking these dogs into doing what you want. Um, and it's not even going to be a hard one because you've got food. Um, <sighs> All right, here we so go. So please make me a fast talk roll for the good boys in the corner. Oh, God, I don't want to fight a dog today. No! <laughs> oh, do you want to push? I'm going to push. Because, uh... You know what? I wasn't sweet before. I should be saying that they're a good boy. They're the best boy. That's what they like to hear, I've heard. I don't know. They're usually just biting me on my way over a fence or into a car. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
Oh, and it's uh, a fair digital dice roller. Yeah, woof. Uh, woof. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> indeed. Uh, the the barking of the dogs uh, starts up and then just as quickly stopped stops as they lunge at you and they get a really solid chunk uh, out of your left leg, Virginia. My least favorite one. Oh. <laughs> uh, and they are gonna take uh, two hit points. Okay. Um, Man, oh. I should have fought a dog. Uh, if these dogs have already decided to attack my friends, as long as those stagehands are staring straight at us, I think I'm gonna grab the nearest blunt weapon and uh, smack the closest dog as hard as I can, or the one that bit Virginia. Sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. Peta. <laughs> Please uh, feel free. The closest thing at hand is uh, one of the, the vases when he restored yes. that vase to being fully together um, on the table. Uh, it is close at hand if you want to take a swing there. Oh, yeah. I want to try and roll, shatter this thing on its head. Do you want a fighting um, brawl or like a strength? I'm thinking... Strength would be super nice. <laughs> but you Just can do a fighting roll. brawl is fair. Oh, actually, my fighting brawl's better. Can I brawl? Yep. <gasps> nope. This is one of those trick vases that cracks before. <laughs> it's like shatter glass, stage glass. Uh, unfortunately, yes, you have picked up one of the prop vases, and it goes to pieces uh, on the dog's head. So you have uh, drawn its attention, uh, but you didn't even really hurt it. Do they, it does let go of Virginia's arm, but it, now it's do staring they have? At you. Are they wearing collars around their necks? Is what I'm curious about. Yeah. Would I be able to, in the kerfuffle of everything that's going on, be able to just pull from the collar, try to pull the dog away off of my friend's leg? Sure. Uh, please give me a strength roll. I am good at those, despite my small stature. <laughs> Hey, it's that yeah! gas it's That head. is a success. Yes! Uh, and Zelda comes around from the back and just grabs both of the dogs by the collars, who are thoroughly distracted, uh, biting and, and or being bonked on the head. Now uh, I'm the food. And, <laughs> um, and you can hold the dogs in place. You're not exactly sure what's going to happen, but the dogs are under control. They have, you've gotten somehow the grip on them that makes them think that they're supposed to be to wait, so they, they sit down. Yes, um, as right. If they're waiting for the next step. I'm just like, heal! Stay! Sit! Any other commands? Good boy! Yes! As I'm holding onto their collars. I nod to Virginia and then I look at one cabinet and I myself go for the other cabinet uh, and, and rip the doors open. There's a eerie glow coming out of them, but there's no obvious false panel. There's nothing going on. Oh, wait. Do you actually, see anything, Virginia? Other than this eerie glow? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna close the doors, okay? If I don't come back, give my cut to Dorothy. And I <laughs> shut the doors. You shut yourself into one of those gates? Yeah. Uh, Virginia, it is tough to watch your friend smush herself up into that tiny box. And it is somehow even more surreal to watch her come popping immediately out of the other box. But without three magic points and one sanity point. <sighs> but I, I don't... Did I see anything when I went in there? MK, there was nothing. You were in one box. And as you closed it behind you, you just kept moving forward and space wobbled around you in a way that you can't account for. And you came tumbling out the other side. And every part of your body knows that it should have been about six feet to the right. And every part of it is screaming a little bit inside your skin. But there you stand. 
I want to fall into Virginia's arms. I mean, I don't even want to. I just do. <gasps> did you see anything? I mean, are you okay? That should be the first question. But did you see anything? Uh, don't think so. That was weird. And then I'm just gonna like hold, uh, squeeze her close for a second. Okay, sorry. I'm just kind of like <laughs> you brush hugging her back when I'm like on one leg. That was nice. <laughs> Yeah, you're getting a little blood on your uh, nice pants there, MK. But, uh... Oh, uh, can I patch that up for you? You know, I thought I was just gonna walk around like this. Yes, please patch it up for me, thank you. Okay, I'm, <laughs> um, can I attempt a first aid on, on sure. Virginia's wound? Hard oh, success. Very Did nice. He's... That's one immediate point back, right? Yeah. Ooh, okay. But I'm going to say because of hard success, uh, you've beautifully bandaged it um, with another piece of fabric that was lying around. It's a backstage. There's uh, tons of fabric drapery everywhere. Um, the whole colored uh, flags that were making the stage look like a fantasy palace are available to you. Um, yeah, I, I ripped on. them into a little tourniquet, but at the same time, I tie it with like a big frilly bow. It looks really nice. Ta da! Um, Zelda, and... would you say a presentation from the performer? It looks beautiful. I am so proud of you. However, I'm a little concerned that you're bleeding a little bit. And now it, it seems as though there's something terrifying inside those boxes. I don't want to think about it. How about we just go have another drink? I'm a little concerned. I'm a little <laughs> concerned. Now I don't want to. I'm I'm still wrestling these these dogs. I want holding them back, but uh, would I be able to get close enough to make possibly an occult roll to see sure. if there is something a little creepy going on? Something's not. Something is 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 sparking uh, something in my instincts that tells me that this is off, and I need to inspect. Absolutely. Success. All right. So here's the thing. You know something of the occult, and you know a lot about stage magic. So what you know for a fact is that there is no stage magic trick you know of that could be causing what these boxes are doing. You know all the I... classics. You know doubles and trapdoors. You know all of this... Uh, machinery that can go into a lot of these illusions and this is not one of them mm, my friends i know for a fact that this this is no ordinary stage illusions this is actually something's a bit off here i'm a little i got the heebie-jeebies myself here because i can't explain it and i can explain everything i don't give away my secrets but i know this I don't know. MK has just kneeled down, looking at one of the dogs, just panting in time with the dogs panting, because she can't. She's not really back yet. She kind of. She took a little trip. I think I'm still a little. Not so much not buying it, but like trying to find another answer that's not the occult. Sure, sure. Um, I would. Let's see. At this point, I would love for anyone to do either an education check, a stage magic check, or any other kind of sort of general knowledge check that you might uh, have. Because um, you hear those voices coming from the dressing room as they're, they're sort of winding down. Mm. They seem a little bit less. Um, and I, I just want to see if something comes to mind here. While I haven't applied to my education, it seems like I am actually very educated <laughs> looking at my <laughs> stats here. So uh, if, if I if I may. Please. Let's see. So I stare at the boxes. I wanna call upon Can I use my art of disguise? Cause how would one No, this is not applicable at all. <laughs> I'll roll education. I I mean, I love a good what if. <laughs> I fail. I'm okay. still 
in doubt of what is up and what is down and what is uh, uh, sky and what is ground. It rhymed, Dr. Seuss. Zelda, you, uh, you look at those boxes um, and now you can see what MK pointed out, that they used to have Egyptian imagery on them and it's been painted over black. Um, and you, suddenly some wheels start turning in the head, in your head and uh, some folks, some facts come together and you suddenly remember, you said earlier that somebody should have trained Harold Hawkins better. You do know who trained him. He actually trained under Memphis the Great. <gasps> and Memphis the Great has another name. Memphis the Great's real name is Axel Schwartz. Axel Schwartz, Axel Schwartz. <gasps> My friends, I knew something was fishy about all of this. I said it earlier on in this evening. And now, behold, I using my, uh, yeah, I, I don't have to pretend around you guys. Listen, I just remembered this wasn't an actual yeah. magic trick. But however, I remembered something very important. This, this, this magician we're looking at right here, this young one, he, he was trained by none other than that Memphis uh, magician, Memphis the Mag was it Memphis the Magnificent? Am the I great. also you Memphis the Great? I thought I wasn't using the same the same moniker. No, right. Memphis the Great. Memphis the Great is none other than I'm sorry. What, what did you say? His name was Axel Schwartz. Axel Is that Schwartz. Axel Schwartz. That Axel Schwartz. This is information we could perhaps use against the guy, if needed. I say we corner him and get some answers. I agree. He's not really in a place to lie to us right now. No. The authorities are going to be coming soon enough. Wouldn't he like to have an alibi? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you actually can uh, get back to the dressing room uh, before it looks like he's gone to check uh, the progress as they're loading Edith onto that ambulance. And temporarily, his dressing room is empty. I want to check the locker. All right. Cover me. No, I got uh, you back. I got you covered. I'm, I'm all, I'm on your six. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a locksmith or a strength roll because it is super locked. I got a mm. good locksmith. Oh, uh, uh, it's ooh. locked. Can somebody help me out here? I do not. Yeah. No, I'm a push. I'm a push. It's too good for this. All right. Now's your moment, Virginia. Get in this room. You Take can deep do breath. it. I think of everything Pete's ever taught me. Mostly pockets and pockets don't have locks, but I know how to do locks now. I'm a bank robber for Pete's sake. <sighs> for Pete's sake. No, I failed <gasps> Pete. Step aside. Step aside. Let an old woman handle hold up, this. Hold up. That's to feel like with a push. Okay. Yeah, um, I gotta suffer a little. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Did I? As I looked, I, I, I didn't mean to. I, I, no, I no, saw no. I looked oh, at the good. thing. Uh, on you failed the push locksmith roll. As you are leaning down over that locker, moving the dial around, pretty sure you've got it this time. The door opens. What are you doing? It's Harold. <clears throat> Excuse Come me. in and sit down. I draw my gun. He did. I, I, I Shut my word. the door. He does as he's told. Eyeing the locker even more. He goes to stand in front of it. In front of the locker? Yeah. Open it. It looks like he's... Why should I? Who are you people? We're your best friends. We've seen the sweat on your brow. We have traveled through your magical cabinets. And we need to know what's happened to the Leary brothers. I think there's answers in that locker of yours. 
Who? What? What? Of what are you speaking? I want to backhand him with my my hands, <laughs> slap him. Okay. Uh, I guess. I... Don't play dumb with me. Fighting. If, if presuming he resists, uh, it's gonna be. Oh yeah, he could definitely oppose with another fighting or dodge. All right. Um. He is going to try to just get out of your way. Swing. Oh, I miss. <laughs> Ooh, can I try and wrestle him to the ground? Well, let's find out if he also misses. Yeah. And I'll be right back here. I'm holding the gun, and then I, I try and backhand him, but I really just, like, hit my own gun. Uh, <laughs> Um, open it. Just open it. What happened? <laughs> I, I, uh, I swung my backhand and it hit my gun and hit me off target. Not ideal. So I'm um, not, yeah, for a moment, uh, he, he's not even at gunpoint. For the record, he uh, effectively does, in fact, dodge out of the way of your, your attempt to backhand and now is feeling even less threatened. Um, oh, jeez. Virginia, get in here. All right, I want to try and wrestle him to the ground uh, and make some stuff real clear with him. <laughs> ah, but it's not a good roll day for me. All right. What have we I got? know punching and stealing. At least let me have punching. No! How? Is that fair? And he slithers out of your grasp as well, and soon he is in the in back in the corner. Was. Uh, he's got uh, a surprisingly spry, as many stage magicians are. Um, it takes surprising strength and flexibility to do some of these feats, uh, as Zelda well knows. Um, and he is standing in the corner. At this time, he has... Or actually, you know what? He leaps for his locker, and he does unlock it almost faster than you can see. Um, and he grabs out of it quickly what looks like a book, but more importantly, a revolver. And he mm. points it at all of you. He grabs a book <sighs> and a revolver? Yep, book in one hand, revolver in the other. You don't want to do this. I'm holding yeah. a gun back in him. You already got a lady with a skull injury and a lady with a bite out of her leg, so you're not doing great tonight. And that lady who could possibly be your mother, how could you? Yeah. I'm trying to help you here, buddy. Tell us, something's got you very worried. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I have nothing, nothing to say. Um, How about we both lower the guns real nice? We could just have a little chat, huh? Well, we could, uh... Make me a charm, pages. fast talk, psychology, whatever you want to do. Oh, I'm going to... Let's see, I think I have... Not charm, not intimidate. I think I have persuade. Yeah, that's my best. It's in your best interest, buddy boy. You know what? Uh, he can see the the advantages of not having a gun pointed at him. He says, I don't know. Perhaps you didn't trust me after what happened to Edith. I swear I would never do anything to hurt her. Unfortunately, many of our effects have hidden dangers, but I would never put her in any danger. As to what you said about my tricks, of course I cannot reveal my secrets, I'm sure. You did not experience what it seemed, but I'm afraid I cannot discuss it any further. And I have nothing else to say, and I don't know who, the, the Weary Brothers? What? I don't even know what that, what you, you were referring to. Can I think I... you must have me mistaken for someone. Can I, uh, uh, I'm not particularly good at psychology, but I want to look over, I think Zelda knows people. She reads me every week, and I want to kind of, is he telling the truth? Yes, yeah, it's what I wanted to know, is using, also using a psychology, is, uh, you know he was seeming a little sweaty and a little, do you, do you for, have bouts of, of forgetfulness? Do you have moments where you you don't remember where you are or where you were or how you got there? You sound like Ingrid. No, I'm fine. 
I'm fine. Like, oh, maybe we should talk to Ingrid. My fiance, Ingrid Schwartz. She's just waiting with Edith in the ambulance. She'll be back in a moment. Yeah, perhaps we get a little talk with uh with your loved one. Uh I'm a little concerned for you, kid. You look you ver you listen, you're very handsome. You're very talented. But I'm seeing some things you shouldn't be under this much stress in this in, in your age. There's so much more you gotta live to regret for, you know? Yeah. It they gets the worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is your read on Harold Hawkins. Uh, he really didn't mean anything bad to happen to Edith. Uh, he definitely is hiding something in terms of whether he's okay, um, which is why he was putting you off with mentioning that with Ingrid. Um, but he doesn't seem to know who the Leary brothers are. Um, that seemed like genuine confusion on his part um, as this conversation took several turns he didn't expect. Hmm. And he is definitely under more stress than he should be. Yeah. Maybe he's clutching we that book. Yeah, sidebar. He's got that book. Yeah, I, I'm just going to... Yeah, all the, the things that I... Nonsense that I talk as, as I, I'd like to turn around and say, yeah, well, first of all, there's that book that he's got. And also, uh, his Ingrid, his, his, his fiance. Did you notice that last name? Same as the guy that trained him. Yes. Something. So I'm connecting all the dots. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Speaking of dots, why would Velma give us the tickets here if this guy doesn't know anything about the Leary brothers? But maybe he knows of somebody who does. <sighs> yeah. What if he is, man? Oh, he's too young. He's too no. young. But what if, uh, you know, he's uh, in his dove or in his dog or uh, possessed or... I don't know. I don't do magic. Zelda, that's oh. your field. I don't do magic either, but you know one thing every magician has? An assistant. Secret? Yeah. That's... So. That's right, I say nervously as I say, <laughs> no, that I do actually do not have. I am not uh, up to that... Uh, status level. So who's helping Memphis? Memphis. Let's ask this guy. I turn. No gun. No gun. We're friends here. Friends, we can help you, and you answer something for us, and then we'll do something for you. When was the last time you saw Memphis the Great, your mentor? As I look at him knowingly, like, we got information, smuggling. Oh, Together even. a year ago. If you, you must know, me. he was stifling me. I, I, I was holding secrets he wouldn't reveal. I don't need him. I don't need his secrets. But you would think, after all those years of working together, that he would want to let me in. And it was so good for so long, until he came back from Bhutan and just, it was different after that. When did he go But I've Bhutan? moved on. Where's this Bhutan you speak of? Why'd he go there? Oh, one of his tours, uh, he and... His assistant, Josephine, were uh, doing a command royal performance, I believe. Hmm? He was... There was a, a, an ugly business. Uh, he was kidnapped briefly. Hmm? He's never talked about it much, but... Either way, it was no excuse. I just... I date it from that period because it seemed as if something on that trip must have turned him against me. Made him unwilling to keep teaching me. And I deserved to learn. I deserved to learn the secrets. I was a very talented, I am, am a very great magician. And I have an excellent show and I am learning more all the time. I'm sure well, he you don't have too. crowds. What? 
What Your crowds that? aren't quite what Memphis's were, but uh, what were you saying, Virginia? I'm just saying I'm sure Edith is a big fan of the show, too. Uh, speaking of assistants, have you seen Josephine since? Periodically around town, but not since I stopped working with him. Would she know anything about his last whereabouts? Whereabouts? <clears throat> Where he's been. Uh, cause I just would love to check out a show sometime. Well, I don't know what you need to see that for, but I, I don't believe he had us anything scheduled at the moment. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I'd rather not speak of it. If you want more information, of course you could ask Ingrid. Um, oh, of course you know that she's his daughter. She's his daughter? You don't yes. say. I, what well, did I you tell know. you? We gotta talk to his uh, fiance. We did she live with so you much. or at the house of Memphis? She has her own apartment. She moved out some time ago. They used to be very close, but um, maybe less so over time. Perhaps she could tell he wasn't valuing me as, I ought, she, as he ought to have. I haven't asked her what came between them, but uh, she has her own apartment in town. So it wasn't your relationship that got you and Memphis on the wrong foot. Something else. No, we were, we were a family. Hmm. I think it he was jealous. Say. I think he was jealous of my talent, and that's why he would not share his secrets. Must be tough. I'm sorry that you lost uh, the connection you all once had. Well, so you can see why it is no business of mine if he leaves town for six weeks. Is he still hold? Wait, oh, that's important. But uh, is he still holding the book? Yes. Can I spot a title? Sure. Roll me a spot hidden. Yay! Oh, <gasps> ooh! Yeah. It is a long title. Um, you can make out the first half of it pretty cleanly. Something about thaumaturgical prodigies. The book looks old. It does not look like uh, this is a manual of things. It's not a Bible. It's not anything that you would obviously keep in a locker. Right, but it does have that old book smell to it. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. If only we could bottle it. I could I smell take that a deep all day. Sniff. <laughs> Footsteps from outside indicate that Ingrid is coming back. And uh, hastily... He shoves the book and the gun both back in the locker. If you, if we could not mention that unpleasantness, in front I slide of my the gun back into my holster. I yeah, no, it's fine. And I, I kind of uh, turn to my to my compatriots here and say, "You, yeah, it's. Don't you think we ought to talk to her privately? Because maybe she got something to say that maybe he don't need to hear." Yeah, maybe we don't really see him to leave. leave. Yeah, they don't really seem on the same page in the first place anyway. They really don't. Uh, they uh, they got to work on that if they're ever going to be betrothed. Yeah. Can I use, uh, before she comes in, I just quickly want to size up his physical, like his level of tiredness, his physical state. Okay. Uh, this whole time he's been talking to us. Maybe first aid? Sure. This is not fair how nice these digital dice are being to me. <laughs> <laughs> but as a last year's like nice nice not to have a bite out of your leg. Um, yeah, I have I have assessed the female form while developing photographs so many times that it's like I can see x-ray vision through his clothes and assess every uh every my new detail of his physical being. Weird thing is physically checks out. You saw yourselves how like he's quick on his feet mm -hmm. um his dexterity's fine uh it's it's not the body um i'm pointing at my temple and it's getting green screened out sorry <laughs> uh that seems to be going wrong here the physical exhaustion for sure um tired not sleeping uh but but no other sort of telltale things other than things that you would expect from stress okay something really wrong with the noggin I'm gonna open the door for the lady. Thank you. 
They've gotten Close it behind the ambulance. her. They say she's going to be all right. Really, that was quite a head wound. I mean, I had a chance to look at it closely. And we're so grateful. Thank you. Was that... I... I did I... I'm, so, I'm sorry, I've forgotten myself. My name is Ingrid. Did I get your names? Rhodes. Private Eye. Here's my card. Anything you need. If he ever, you know, you suspect anything, you want me to follow him? I whispered to her. Just let me know. And she looks carefully at the card. Hmm. And, and your companions? Baker, I'm here as a friend. Zelda the Magnificent Ashante. A professional, charmed. Do they need you at the ambulance, uh, uh, Mr. Hawkins? They may want to do some sort of statement from you for the authorities. Oh, uh, I, I suppose. I used to be a cop. I know how things go. Really? Ingrid looks intrigued again, looks at your card. Um, and uh, Harold steps out to go see to the ambulance. Actually... You say you're an investigator. That's right. Uh, as are my friends for the day, we've been deputized, as you see. We're looking into some mysterious happenings around the theater. Well, oh, uh, this theater? Well, not exactly here, having to do with people involved. Right. You I, seem I, I like promise. you have something on your mind. Something you need some sort of consultation about. Well, as a matter of fact... Uh, anyone want to make a, a charm or persuade or credit rating or... Um, right now, she's. it's just occurred to her that you seem very legit. Um, so anything you can do to back Why? that up. Well, I tried credit Jesus, rating. Broke as heck. Hmm? Oh, not fair. I just Charm shuffle the bit like... what, el what else was there as an option? Um, I would go with Charm, Persuade, uh... Ooh! Got an Exaxes. An oh, Exact persuade. Success! Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all uh, you need. <laughs> I would say, for you, Zelda, if you wanted to add, you could always <laughs> use acting. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I am very good at that. I've had years of training, so I'm going to to use that as a skill. However, <laughs> in this cir individual circumstance, I will say that I have failed. The the way you carry yourself, MK, has uh, impressed her. The the dropping of she she seems very sort of the type of person who would be impressed that you used to be on the force. Um, and you presented what seems like a very legit card to a private investigator, and she says, As a matter of fact, uh, there is a small matter. Uh, my father is out of town, but something terribly shocking has happened at my childhood home. We know a little bit about that. You what? Don't worry about our sources. We've heard a thing or two. Mostly just street gossip. Oh. More interested in what it is that you've learned about it. Well, I don't know. I don't know a thing about it. I know Palmer and Pickering are handling it. That's my father's attorneys until he gets back. But to think in my own home. It's terrible, man. But I can't Palmer help and Pickering? Them. Palmer and Pickle? Oh, yes, uh, Palmer and Pickering, my, my father's attorneys. Pickering. So my hearing is not that great. Too busy listening to the spirits from the other world. Just, just tuned in. That's right. I am very attuned to the spiritual ether. And so that kind of clogs my hearing sometimes. I apologize. Uh... MK is going to rub the lucky rabbit's foot in her pocket as she thinks about that. Uh, how long has your father been gone? Was it six months? No, uh, weeks at least. Uh, he's often off on various travels. He usually says something before he goes, but if he's heard of a good tip, you might not see him for 
a, a month. It's been a little bit over that, I think. Um, but he, we expect to hear from him any day. I just imagine. Have you sent him correspondence home. to tell him about what's occurred at his home? No, he he didn't leave us any way to reach him this time. It's his way. He. So that's a usual thing for him to go off and not give you any place for to reach him at. He doesn't usually tell me. I, he must have left word at his uh, theatrical agents. You could probably check with them. Uh, I don't know. I haven't. No one has mentioned where he might be this time. Um, and it is a little bit longer than normal, but you know, the last time it was a month in Brazil. Mm. Hmm. Have you uh, noticed and, and, something strange with your fiancé lately? Yeah! Uh, we can't help but mention we overheard you saying he wasn't sleeping enough. Hmm? Ah, uh, you're so kind. I, I'm, I'm afraid... Harold has not been quite himself. Is this a recent thing, or is this he's always been like that? He's not, no, no. He was the, the most wonderful young man. That smile, I'm sure you've noticed. Uh, it, it, it has changed a little. I know, since he stopped working with my father, he's been frustrated. I'm terribly proud of his show. He's getting quite good, but, uh... Recently, a little, a little different. And ever since it was that your father went off on this trip? I, it could be. I, I don't... I don't, I don't know when if... I don't believe they've seen each other. They refuse huh. to be in a room together. <laughs> that is very odd. Give me one more, uh, Charm, Persuade, Acting, Psychology, whichever of those four you want to Okay. Use. I'm, I'm going to do an acting, because that's, that one is, is, and that has done me well, this role, it is a hard success. With a hard success, Ingrid grew up on the road. Uh, she is actually, despite the fact that she comes off as the normiest norm person that you've ever seen, she is only really comfortable when she's around show people. Um, and Zelda has put her, almost to her own surprise, completely at ease. Um, and she leans over. She says, We did. I tried to talk to her about it, and we did. We had a terrible fight. Just a little over a month ago. He stormed out. I don't know where he went. Some bar somewhere. I shudder to think. I just thought he ought to talk to someone. About whatever. In his head? Him. Talk about something bothering him? About his emotions? No Yes, way. it was more than his ordinary frustration. It was... He was changing. And since... Since... We had that argument. He has certainly not been the Herald that I fell in love with. It's all too common, miss. I hand her a handkerchief. <laughs> oh, Scott. There, there, dear. It's all right. We, uh, we, I'm, I, I'm gonna help you get to the bottom of this because, you know, it seems like you two have something to gather together and that, uh, and that I, I want to help you get back to that. Something in here doesn't seem right, but don't you worry. Thank you. If... Ingrid, could you perhaps show us your childhood home? Uh, I'm sure the police have investigated, but we'd love to take a look around and see if there's any clues they missed. They can be hasty to come to a conclusion. It's part of why I left the force in the first place. MK is the best in the biz. Of course. Uh, absolutely. I, 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 of course, I, I still have my keys. Um, and I'm sure my father's mind would be put much at ease if we could just make sure everything's all right. 
I'm sure that the lawyers are ta handling it, but I I know they would value your your able help. I I think I think that is a very good idea. And she hands you her card and she says, "If you'll excuse me, I just I just must collect myself." Um, and she steps out of the dressing room, leaving you three alone. Sounds like there's an attorney, and we got a friendly inn to the spot where these brothers died. Way to go, Zelda. Thank you. I, you know what? Sometimes I just like to think a little bit of human touch, a little yeah. bit of compassion, a little bit of reaching out to somebody to make them feel like like they are loved and and supported will uh, will go far in when you are doing these uh, sort of investigations. And where does the sleight of hand come in? A uh, sleight of hand can also be used any time. I am not opposed to that. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Well, anything else we should see while we're here? I Can I let go of these dogs? They really feel like I don't want to be caring for know. them. The one on the left <laughs> is keep... just quiet. Have, uh, they keep looking at Virginia and salivating. It's making me very nervous. I really, I wasn't. I this isn't what I signed up for initially when I when I signed when I went in for this. <laughs> I'm a little. My arms are getting tired. Yeah, the one on the right knows that I've got good marbling. <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's all about the marbling. I have been assuming you, you, uh, once you all got a decent distance away from the cabinets, the dogs felt tugged against your leash and wanted to go back to them. So I had assumed that you maybe let them go. But if you'd like to now, <laughs> return them to their location. Yes, so. thank you. Listen, I'm an old lady. I can't, I can't, it's not, not as strong. I'm strong, not as, as I used to be. It's the endurance it's, that's what gets you. Um, can we, since we're alone in here, Wait, the dogs are right by the, the locker again? No, the dogs, they guard the cabinets. Okay, got it. Um, should we try and take one more peek into this locker here? Nothing oh, I'm all for snooping, yeah. Yes. Go for it. I it's love opening expertise. things I'm not supposed to be in. I'll watch the door. Wanna give one more shot at that strength or locksmith check? Oh god, what do I have that's better than the other? It doesn't matter at this point, I've lost so much blood. I've got one in Locksmith, so you got me beat. Alright, I'm gonna, I think I, yeah, 55. Come on, come on, I don't care how much blood I've lost, I've done this a million times. Ah! This is not fair. I feel like you should refresh your browser. <laughs> it's the dog bite. The dog bite is just throwing you <laughs> yeah. off. Uh, does anyone want to just try to force it with a strength roll? Oh, you know it. I've had enough of this. And this is when MK's temper comes out, and that doesn't do it. She just punches into the the locker's door as hard as she can, creating a small dent and doing nothing to the lock whatsoever. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, yeah, I think we've seen it up here, unless uh, anyone else... Uh... <clears throat> what was strength? Has anything to under? say? I, I shake my hands. Up top in your characteristics. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's not fair to roll again. Um, yeah. I I feel like if if Virginia has not give has given it a shot, I I think I might afterwards if she does not I will have a uh, a chance <laughs> to Can to possibly like... give it a shot. I just really want to see you like grab a handkerchief. Put it over ah! the lock, give it a shake. Oh, well, <laughs> if we want to make this a show, I am I am obliged to <laughs> to make this entertaining for you, my friends. After after Virginia busts it open, we still the, do the show. <laughs> I will still, Virginia busts it open, Virginia does bust it open, but I am still preparing <laughs> in the midst because I took too long, is why, for, with all the flourish, I said, oh, what I will do is I will, I will, I will, I will roll my sleeves up mm -hmm. and then, then do this uh, chant from the ancient, oh, you did it. Good job. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. You loosened it for me. I did. I did with my mind. Yeah. 
you figured out just the right place to sort of jam at it from an angle in your frustration over this locker that got you caught, and the door goes pop, right open, and you can see what oh, he hastily shoved back in there. <laughs> I pull oh, out shoot. my gloves from my pocket before touching anything. Absolutely. There is a revolver, which why does a magician have a revolver in a mm -hmm. locker? And there's a book, which who keeps a book in a locked safe in their dressing room? Um, Exhibit A. Oh, I also wrote in my inventory that I have a briefcase, uh, which is has various, you know, like dusting powders for fingerprints and uh, uh, such things. And so I would like to take the book, but without touching it. It is in my gloved hands. And I want to present it to my friends before placing it in my briefcase. Oh, how lovely. Uh, I do not have such uh, such fancy equipment, but I, I will I will pr at least give uh, touch it with a or at least procure a handkerchief. And I stop pulling handkerchief after handkerchief <laughs> after handkerchief after handkerchief. <laughs> do you take a look at it as you put it away? I would. I would like to glance at it if it is, if it is being offered. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. I hand it to you. The full title of the book is Thaumaturgical Prodigies in the New England Canaan. Uh, and it looks like it is late 18th century. This thing is old. Uh, it's worth a lot of money. Um, and if you do, do you flip open that cover? Oh yeah, I'm very curious, especially since it smells so it's got that old book smell. There is something off about this book, and there is something almost radiating from it. And you can see a couple of spells listed in this thaumaturgical prodigies of the New England Canaan. They say things like Let's see contact here. Nyarlato and contact Yoga Sufyotha. And in nice. the inside front cover, there is a little monogram from the library of Memphis the Great. Huh. Well now, it seems as though this book is from the private collection of the man in question. Something uh, is unsettling about that. Uh, uh... You are beginning to suspect that these secrets that Memphis refused to share with his assistant, that box with Memphis's trademark symbols on it, painted hastily in black in the way you might cover for something you've stolen, and this book from the Library of Memphis the Great, there may be more to these secrets than meets the eye. But what do they have to do with Harold Hawking's stressed state? And how does any of it connect to the poor Leary brothers whose bodies were found having apparently murdered each other in horrible ways inside the house of Memphis? I hope you will come back next week and find out. I can't wait to find out more. <laughs> I know, I'm so curious. Amy, such a cliffhanger! I love uh, this. Let's, um, shall we go around real quick and uh, everybody shout out what you're up to and where people can find you and whatnot? Uh, uh, let, let's start, let's start with Nora. Um, hi everybody, uh, I'm Nora Ibrahim. You can find me at Instagram and Twitter at Noralogical. I stream, uh, let's see, Monday nights with Realmsmith for Into the Mist. I stream on th uh, Thursdays with Becca for, for Black Dice Society. Saturdays uh, on Damsels and Dice, and and Fridays I do Q times for this World of Darkness thing that B Dave is running, uh, and then lots of other stuff to just follow me on the things. And I don't want to take it up any more time. Take it away, Virginia Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have a cat here somewhere. I, I hear her, but I can't see her. Uh, who knows? She's just One in the ether now. Cats. She's a ghost cat. 
Uh, hi, uh, I'm Vanessa. You can find me on Fandom Tabletop every Thursday. And if you're a fan of horror, I host a podcast called Kicking and Screaming, where we pair horror movies and martial arts movies to make double features. Because uh, they're like chocolate and peanut butter. If you like one, you'll like the other. And every week, one of us picks one movie, and then the other one has to come up with a pairing. Um, and we've had some very fun guests uh ranging from all of your favorite people in like martial arts and horror stuff to like macaulay culkin one time that was weird um cool. so yeah thank you so much <laughs> thank you i'm in love with all of you after this game um but yeah check that out that's something that like floats your boat <laughs> amy uh, you can find me here next week wrapping up this adventure, uh, appreciating the incredible work of the writers of this adventure, which I'm having so much fun putting across. Thank you all for giving us so much gold to work with, and thank you to y'all, the incredible players, uh, <laughs> bringing this to life. I'm having such a blast. You can find me over on my own Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash Uh And soon you can maybe find me hanging out with some friends. You mean like got your vaccine or you have secrets? Oh, well, that... I, I'm very thrilled to say that uh, I am on my way to Vaxland um, and waiting that out. But there there might be some secrets. Maybe yes. maybe playing over with me somewhere? Excellent. Over on Phantom Tabletop? Uh, I am very, very excited uh, to be maybe swinging by to learn some Cortex good times uh, hey. under Vanessa running running the show um, my oh, first okay. time ever i've never gm'd in my entire life so you're yes! gonna be my first yes! table oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you oh my gosh okay. i love that so much i'm, very uh, I'm becca scott and i run this channel as well as good time society find us on youtube which is the same place you will find this vod if you want to share it with friends we appreciate that so much and thanks so much one more time to chaosium for sponsoring the show don't forget this this coupon code this could be yours type it in and check out and that's all we got for you see you next time next week for part two of this adventure amy thank you for crushing it so hard appreciate oh, thanks, you guys good night Bye.